So um, I think before I even start this presentation, um, I just want to say uh, some really interesting ideas shared already in room two. Um, I think you'll see some trends in, in um, my presentation and, and what our network has done. So we're really interested to see your comments and how we can look at developing our elements even further. So yes, good morning. My name is Ross Coupland. Um, I'm representing Stamford College and our network. And as you can see in front of you, um, what we wanted to do this academic year was work through um, a form of diagnostic assessment to really look at student confidence and, and try to develop a sense of empowerment within our cohorts to demonstrate that mastery of specific topics. Okay, so the aim, as you can see, is also in a bit more detail there, we was trying to look at a range of key concepts that our students, we know they often struggle with in GCSE Maths. And what we aimed to do, which you will see shortly, is to bring in um, an activity really um, that would allow our students to not only judge their own ability, but try to express that understanding effectively. Okay, so before we do begin, um, a little bit of context on that and, and what that means for, well, for us and possibly for you as well. Um, why do you do a diagnostic? What's the point of a diagnostic for, for yourself or for your? team or your department or your SLT possibly um, that was one of our starting points why do we bother with a diagnostic and, and what can our uh, teaching teams do to make them effective and how can we work with that and it also represented certainly for Stanford College um, a very much a back to basics approach to really try and support students um, to access maths lessons post lockdown again just to explain Stanford College in particular Last academic year, we delivered maths fully online, 100%. We didn't have students in centre at all. And this academic year, we were looking to readapt and, and, and get back to some form of normality by having on-site lessons. And again, many colleges in our network, we experienced increased levels um, of absence. OK, so whether that be um, students actually having COVID or, and self-isolation taking place. But we also had several instances throughout the academic year, mainly at the start, though, uh, where whole classes were studying from home because of our uh, uh, high level of infection rate. So as we developed and continued through our action research process, those were very much some of the elements that we were considering and trying to identify. So what did we do? We set up two research windows to actually test this diagnostic activity. One was quite early in October and the other one was towards the end of the programme in March. We were able to gather both elements of data uh, from our students and we issued um, a student survey in the form of a Google form, but also on paper to try and maximise that student involvement and engagement. So we made it as accessible as possible. And then from there, we've also combined that data with monthly reflections and thoughts from teachers to try and identify any context and trends that we were um, noticing throughout those two windows and throughout the academic year in general. And as I mentioned, we were also looking at the, some, some software. Um, this was an evolution from the um, action research from the previous academic year. And fortunately, we were able to continue with that. So at Stanford College, we continued working with GCSE Pod, the College of West Anglia. They developed their own um, software using the Moodle platform, which was uh, using a, um, an online diagnostic in the form of um, exam based questions. Peterborough College continued with MathWatch and Grantham and Moulton. They continued using Century. And all in all, we had responses and engagement from about 100 students with eight teachers in total. And this is the main focus that I want to talk about today. This, this is the diagnostic that we actually used. Um, in one sense, it was just a piece of paper that we gave to students to try and work through. But it became so much more than that. And, and one of the hardest elements was trying to lay this out effectively to maximise engagement and student thought. It's just a grid. But trying to generate these comments, I can't tell you how long it took us to work through these comments and phrases. We worked with uh, our English team. We worked with mastery specialists to try and identify low stakes, 
um, a, a engagement that we could get from our students. So it's, it's essentially an easy to hard table, but it's the phrasing that really, really um, helped our students understand what we wanted as teachers to get from them. How many times have you gone to one of your students and said, yeah, you know, what can I help you with? What do you need help with when it comes to, to maths? And they go, everything, or I don't understand any of it. And you, that although that does give you some information, as a teacher, you're often trying to pinpoint, aren't you? You're trying to get into uh, that deeper understanding. Um, so we went away and re we revised this sheet. And what we were trying to do was remove some of that emotive language that students can have um, and, and even fear to an extent when it comes to maths or the resignation that again, they're doing another year of maths. They've been labeled a failure. They've got a grade three um, and, and they're back again to do GCSE maths. So what we were trying to celebrate was what students already knew. So when we launched this diagnostic, it's not a test. This isn't a, a form of assessment where a student is going to get marks for what they put. What we were trying to do was open up a line of communication between student and teacher, or maybe student and LSA, and even student to student, um, to really try and open up their thoughts and understanding of where they thought they were going wrong. So once this was launched at the start of a particular lesson, as you can see here, I've chosen fractions, decimals and percentages as an example. We let students choose what they wanted to do with this. So some students literally put a tick and they judge themselves at the beginning of the lesson and at the end of the lesson to show distance travelled. But as teachers became more confident with it, as it became a more regular feature in lessons, students engaged with it more. They wrote phrases, they added additional comments. We even had, um, from one particular college, we had a non-verbal student that had a counter and they put their counter in the box and the counter would move up and down throughout the lesson. Um, and feedback from teachers has been that partway through a lesson, uh, at the halfway mark maybe, once you've done your chalk and talk, they could quickly walk around the room and identify where students were progressing or where they could judge themselves. And then that allowed us to uh, influence the next stage of the lesson. Did we need to go back and recap? Were students finding this too straightforward? Were we ready to move on to the next step? But what it was doing is allowing students to communicate their feelings, their thoughts, without necessarily being put on the spot. And it, it was trying to build that resilience and that understanding between those cohorts um, and as I mentioned, this wasn't something that's just developing between the teacher and the student, as valuable as that was. This was also something that was growing between the student and the LSA, the student and their, and their, their, their friends and their peers. So again, this was uh, pitched as a low stakes exercise, a low stakes activity uh, where we could try and engage students effectively. Now, don't get me wrong, not everybody, <laughs> not all students used it. And some students don't really struggled to engage with it. It's not something that they enjoyed working with. But others um, really, really went uh, went along with it. So let's have a look at um, at the results in a bit more detail. We we essentially generated four key findings um, based on the information that we gathered. And the first one is that, according to the, the the survey, student engagement in their topics due to the diagnostic tool increased not just in one centre but across all five. And equally, student confidence in their own maths ability increase between all five centres that took part between those two research windows. And what was really positive for us was that the continuation of our interactive maths software was also judged effective by students at all five colleges, increasing slightly in the second survey window. And equally, topics that students felt they needed support with was common across all five colleges, which is what you would expect. But what was more surprising was that there was little change between the first window in October and the second in March. So to look at that in a little bit more detail, just so you can um, identify the colours there, the blue, uh, the blue bars that you're seeing is the data gathered in October 2021. And the orange data reflects uh, the window two of March. And those are the questions that I was just referring to. So 
as you can see there on a scale of one to five, how would students rate that diagnostic tool in supporting them to engage in their lesson? And this was gathered, as mentioned, through the Google form or through a paper based activity. Although College 2 has a slight increase, it's an increase nonetheless. <laughs> We're going to celebrate that. And um, that is the same across all five of those colleges. And we can also see that with the second survey question that was issued, students did judge that their confidence improved over time. Now that could be a natural process, couldn't it? If they're, if they're attending more lessons and if they are engaged in more maths activity and reviewing their topics, we would expect that increase. But what we're trying to identify and what the student comments was showing us was that potentially that diagnostic tool was, a, was playing a key part. And it's interesting to note, we plan to do further work with College 5, for example, um, which saw significant increases between those two windows. And, and College 2, again, which also has an increase, but has the smallest increase, be interesting to, to make further comparisons with those. And that's what we aim to do in the, in the final window of action research next academic year. And again, in terms of the math software that I referred to earlier, we can see that every college saw an increase as to how students judged their progression. And that that particular intervention was also making good use. Um, I've also just done a quick word wall there um, at the bottom just to see um, what students were saying in their feedback. And it's interesting to note that uh, progression or, or, or progress was something that students were really identifying as from that diagnostic tool and confidence. And again, that's that's what's really hit me today with those last two presentations that we've seen in room two, developing that student confidence to engage with activity, to engage with questions is something that our network really wanted to focus on. And we feel that we're very much um, trying to develop something here and that we've kind of stumbled across something by going back to that back to basics approach. And then interestingly, just a quick um, snapshot of those challenging topics that I referred to as well. So as you can see, um, those I'm sure those are topics that, that your students do struggle with. Um, but we were surprised to see that although we had covered fractions several times throughout our scheme of learning, it still features um, late in March 22. OK, granted, numbers aren't high. As you can see, we've had about 100 responses from both. But uh, it was quite telling to see that fractions did remain throughout, as does angles. Okay. Uh, ratio is also a common one, which we, which we would expect. So that suggests that, again, as a, as a college or as a, as, a, as a network, we need to consider how we implement that. Why do students feel that those, those topics are challenging? And again, part of our next steps is to identify, is it the question, is it student confidence with that? Is it something that students don't want to engage with as opposed to the topic itself? And as you can see from our conclusions, although we do like that diagnostic sheet, it does not, you don't necessarily need a sheet that tests students. I think what we found really beneficial this academic year is that we have generated those conversations to empower students to attempt questions. And it's been it's been trying to create a platform in which students can express their concerns, express their understandings, and the teacher can make instant use of that. OK, so as students are working through that mastery process, those that have developed that confidence and, and are then supporting their, their friends, their colleagues, um, are able to progress and show that understanding. And equally, the use of that interactive software what we have noticed, um, because again, we, we it's almost as important, isn't it, to recognise the other side. We do have students that positively engage with, with the interactive software, but we did have a significant negative effect as well. A lot of students said, well, as a result of the online learning last academic year or through lockdown, they developed a negative response that or they associate negative emotions or memories with that process. So it's not the be all and end all when it comes to that. And I think as part of our uh, re-engagement and return to on-site learning has been trying to ensure that we don't overload and overbear students with that online element. It's there as an additional learning tool because otherwise it can have that negative impact. 
And equally, as I mentioned, those students that don't or, or feel they're unable to engage with that diagnostic tool, to the point that we did have a handful of students that did not work with it at all. They, they were not interested in expressing their opinions, their, their views. They didn't understand the, the meaning of it or the value of it. So again, it's just it's just worth identifying that there, there, there must ha have a fail safe, isn't there? Make sure that you've got something else in place to support um, to support your learners. And equally, that does also apply for that interactive math software. It does not replace the tutor directed lessons, but it can be a very useful, a very powerful tool that can engage the majority of learners. So what are we looking to do next as a network as we move into the final phase of our, of our action uh, research next academic year? And that is we want to continue developing that diagnostic tool. And one of the key elements is to actually start that at the beginning of the academic year. We, did, we didn't launch until October. So by the time students got into a routine, um, some of that va really valuable key information that you can get through induction right in those first few valuable weeks um, had been lost. So we want to make sure that we can capture that information and work with it effectively. And I think as a network, you can see we've really tried to demonstrate really the value of that emotional response, trying to capture students' feelings, listening or, or demonstrating to students that they've been listened to has been absolutely critical in building those relationships with our learners this year. One of the big key, p, uh, key pieces of feedback was that students would like an online equivalent of that resource as well, to possibly store that information to show progress and distance traveled all the time. We, we started with, with that uh, with the paper-based version because it allowed the teacher to get a snapshot as they walked around the room, but there could be potential and, and investigation into an online equivalent as well, where all that information could be stored. And equally, we continue to plan to review that interactive software as we build on the lessons learned throughout the rest of the project and tie that in with mastery related CPD with our teachers um, to continue that understanding on both sides. And as I draw my presentation to a close, I just want to say significant thanks to the partners that took part in this project this year. So Grantham College, Moulton College, Peterborough College and the College of West Anglia. And also that's very specialist support. Um, specifically from, from Sheila Evans, Norma Honey, Mari Joubert, um, Kath Gladden, Steve, the ETF, and many others um, that, that I don't have time to mention right now. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time, and thank you for your attention, and I look forward to your questions later. Thank you.